only listen to this recording when you can safely relax. Hello, this is Mario speaking to you. And we are going to go through a chair flying session of the circuit. We are going to take off, do one circuit, and then land for a full stop. So take this time now to make yourself comfortable the best you know how to. Good. Now, if you haven't already, slowly close your eyes. And concentrate on your breathing. Feeling the cool air rush in. Your chest expand. And the warm air rushing out as your chest falls down and relaxes. It is not important how long you breathe in or out for, or how deeply you breathe. Just simply observe your breathing. And whatever pace you reach is perfect for you. Now listen to my voice and concentrate on your breathing. I am going to count down from five whenever you are ready. Five, you become more relaxed. Four, your arms are heavy and you are becoming more relaxed. Three, you are becoming more relaxed. You can feel the weight of your body, whether you're sitting down or lying down. Two, you are relaxed. One, you feel warmth on your skin and a light vibration resonates through your body. You can hear and maybe feel the vibrations of the engine of your airplane. You are seated in your airplane with your feet resting on the rudder pedals. Your one hand on the control gently pulling back with a little pressure and your other hand is resting on the throttle. You are sitting at the beginning of the runway and 
you are ready for takeoff. Any pre-takeoff checks or radio transmissions have all been completed. So when you are ready, we can take off and do our circuit. Looking at the end of the runway, you smoothly add full throttle. The airplane starts to gently move forward. As it moves forward, you make sure that you set full throttle and maybe you check your RPM. As we start to build up speed, you notice the airplane is yawing to the left, so you instinctively press down with your right foot and add a little right rudder. As we approach our rotation speed, we gently pull back on the control just a little. Still looking outside, deliberately setting the initial climb attitude. Good. Take this time now to trim the control so the control is nice and light in your hand. Cross check your inclinometer and make sure you have enough right rudder for the climb. Coming up to a thousand feet indicated, you select the gear up. The attitude wants to change a little as the shape of the airplane changes from bringing the gear up. Still looking outside, you add tiny control inputs to maintain the initial climb attitude. And maybe you retrim just a little. Through 90 knots, you select the flaps up. Again, the attitude wants to change, but you still deliberately hold the initial climb attitude. And again, maybe you retrim just a little. Now in the clean configuration, you set the 100 knot climb attitude and re-trim. Now you need to check your track to make sure you are not drifting left or right of center line. So you look over your right shoulder behind you and you notice that 
you are drifting to the left just a little. So flying your attitude once again, you crab to the right just a little with some aileron input on the control. And when you are ready, it is time to do the post takeoff checklist. Gear up, lights out, flaps up. T's and P's are in the green. Prop set to 2400 to 2500 RPM. And fuel pump remains on in the circuit. Post takeoff checklist completed. As we're coming up to 1900 feet, we push forward on the control, lowering the nose, causing us to level off. We add a little bit of forward trim. Time to initiate a turn while we build airspeed. We are going to turn to the right to establish on the right crosswind. Before we turn, let's do a tail to tail lookout. Left looks good. Front looks good. Right looks good. Flying the pivot point ahead. You add a little bit of right aileron and some right rudder. The nose is on the horizon and we are turning at 30 degrees angle of bank. As we become perpendicular to the extended center line, we stop the turn and roll wings level. Good. Now we are established on crosswind. We are almost at a hundred and twenty knots. So you smoothly bring the throttle back to cruise power. And maybe retrim just a little. And if you haven't already, gently feather out that right rudder you had from the climb previously. It is time to turn to downwind. This will be a right turn, 30 degrees angle of bank. So we start with a lookout. Left looks good. Front looks good. And right looks good. When you're ready, you can turn to downwind. You add a little bit of right aileron on the control and maybe a little bit of right rudder. The nose sweeps across the horizon.
we are almost parallel to our runway. So you roll wings level and establish straight and level flight. Good. You look at the runway and you see that we are perfectly parallel and maintaining wingtip spacing. This is the perfect downwind position and this is going very well. You are doing a great job. Now you have a moment to fine tune your trim. So if you wish, take this moment now to establish perfect trim. We are approaching the opposite end of our runway. It is time to do the pre-landing checks. So when you're ready, start the checklist. Fuel pump on. Fuel selector to the fullest tank. Mixture set. Prop 2400. RPM set. Cross check airspeed 120 knots. Flaps select takeoff. Cross check airspeed again 120 knots. Gear select down. The airplane will balloon. So you control this by pushing down on the control, causing the nose to dip down. You leave it there for just a moment and then start to pull back on the control, slowly lifting the nose up slightly above the crew's attitude. Take this time now to add a little bit of more back trim to relieve the control pressure. As we approach 105 knots, you add one to two inches of manifold pressure to prevent the airspeed from bleeding further. And now again you retrim the airplane. Good. You check three green. Test the brakes. Confirm your harness is secure. Pre-landing checklist completed. And now you are established at 105 knots and circuit altitude in the partially dirty configuration. The flaps are at takeoff and the gear is down. Your power setting is a few inches above cruise, or maybe just an inch. Whatever works for you. Now it is time to turn to base. So you do a lookout. Left looks good. Front looks good. And right looks good. 
you gently reduce the throttle to approximately 16 inches and blend in some right aileron to 30 degrees angle of bank. simultaneously easing the nose down to hold 105 knots. We are approaching the perpendicular position to the runway. This is now base leg. So you smoothly roll wings level with a little bit of aileron. We are smoothly descending at 105 knots and 16 inches of manifold pressure. As we converge towards the extended center line, you confirm your altitude and ensure that your descent profile is correct to your position on base leg. Coming up to mid base, we see our altitude is around 1700 feet. This is perfect. You are doing a great job. It is time to turn to final. You do a tail to tail. Left looks good. Front looks good. And right looks good. You blend in some aileron to 20 to 30 degrees angle of bank. And maybe as you turn to final, you manage your descent profile just a little, so you maybe roll out on final around 1350 feet. So maybe you reduce a little bit of power, or maybe even add a little bit of power to make that happen. Good. Coming up to final, you roll wings level, and you see that you are on the perfect glide path. You are gradually descending towards the threshold at a steady angle. The aim point in your field of vision is staying stationary and your runway perspective is staying steady and getting just a little bit bigger as you get closer and closer. Approaching mid-final, maybe you call your airspeed 105 knots and select the flaps to land. The airplane balloons just a little, maybe not even worth correcting. And now the airplane is getting very nose heavy. You control this with more back pressure on the control and retrim the airplane. Now the land flaps 
are causing us to bleed energy. You decide to bleed energy from airspeed only and maintain a constant glide path. You accomplish this by pulling back on the control just a little and maybe re-trimming the airplane with some back trim. And maybe now you do your final checks. Flaps set to land. Gear three green. Final checks complete. Good. Still maintaining a stationary aim point and a steady runway perspective. You cross check your airspeed and you see that you're approaching 85 knots. This is your desired approach speed. To prevent the airplane from bleeding below 85 knots, maybe you add just a little bit of power and ease the nose down just a hair to maintain the glide path steady. As you approach the threshold, you smoothly look at the end of the runway and pull back on the control to be level above the runway. Simultaneously, you reduce the throttle to idle. You notice as you reduce the throttle to idle, the nose starts to pitch down and yaw to the right a little. So you add a little bit more back control pressure to maintain the attitude steady and maybe you add a little bit of left rudder to control the yaw. Now you feel the airplane start to sink towards the runway. You slowly set the airplane to the landing attitude, putting the nose of the airplane just a little bit below the horizon or end of the runway. And now you wait to settle onto the runway. The airplane touches down on the main wheels first. You maintain the back pressure on the control. Gravity settles the nose wheel. You are now coming to a slower speed. You now gently test the brakes by just tapping them a little. Looks like the brakes are working fine. Now, if you choose, you smoothly add continuous braking very gently. You have come to a normal taxi speed and you taxi off at the end of the runway, clearing the runway safely. You now feel a lot more confident 
and relaxed about the circuit. This recording is about to end, but you know that you can come back to this place as many times as you would like and fly the circuit. And when you're ready, your eyes simply open. You have a good stretch and you feel wonderfully good in every way. Thank you for listening and I wish you the very best in all your flights to come.